So, Oliver, you drive... I mean, I haven't yet driven one. There is talk of us having... me having a go in one of your... Not one of yours, because but an old Formula E car. And I learned to drive in go-karts, and I'm terrified, because I'll go... I want to set the slowest lap time ever, yeah. wherever we do it. But just tell me quickly about how you got into Formula E. Did you come from other, other motor racing before that? Yeah, so basically I started off like any sort of young driver. You know, I was five years old, I started go-karting. Right. I went through the ranks, through all the British World Championship. Then I followed the path to Formula One, and uh, right. you know, I finished third in Formula Two 2017. Um, and then I was a test driver for Williams in 2018, and then the opportunity came to join Nissan. Right. And you know, I think with the way that Formula E is uh, really on the way up, yeah. um, it was a no-brainer for me. I didn't have the chance to race in Formula One in, in 19, so I, so I took the choice to, took the choice to go to Nissan. So you had that experience of driving a Formula One car, which is you know generally accepted around the world as being at the absolute peak of that. How does how does it compare with a Formula E in terms of performance? I suppose. I think you know in terms of performance, we're racing on completely different circuits. You know, we race in yeah. city centres with quite narrow, small circuits, and our car would perform better there than theirs. However, right. should we go on a big circuit like here we are at Silverstone today, then they have more downforce, they have more power, you know, yeah. the, the, the rate of where they are in terms of development is extremely high. So, you know, Formula E is a different concept, I think, to Formula 1, but, uh, you know, both are as impressive, and I think for a driver to drive in Formula E is actually extremely challenging. Yeah. I mean, if you look now, the all the drivers are covered by three or four tenths, whereas if you look over to Formula 1, you know, you, the field's covered by four seconds, you know. It, it right. depends a lot in which car you're in in order to get performance but in Formula E you know the driver can make a difference so so from my side it's you know it's extremely exciting that I can sort of put myself up to the challenges in Formula E and, and you know against all these these really good drivers yeah because I mean that's it is interesting how the, there is, seems to be quite a lot of drivers that are that are going well like you did I mean they're going I could go that way but actually this is really interesting and it's a different you know, yeah, and I think, you know, route. all the manufacturers that have come in, all the different brands, yeah. you know, like even Shell are involved with Nissan now. And, and I think the way it's going is just going to be, you know, over the next few years, it's going to be, uh, I think it'll be eye-opening to see how quickly it grows and also how much the, the technology improves, you know, already from season four to season five, the batteries have almost doubled in size. Yeah. We don't have to change cars anymore. We've got much more power than before. So we're already the cars are getting to a level now where they're, they're pretty exciting to drive on a, on a small track. Right. Because it is that the narrowness of the tracks, you know, I've been round the one in Paris in, in particular. That's the probably in, the smallest. Yeah, and I went round in, in reverse in the Renault Zoe doing about 90 miles an hour, which was terrifying. They jiggled it so that it could go backwards really fast. Okay. So it was just, I was in the passenger seat, I wasn't driving. But, you know, you then realise when you're in the car going that fast, even forwards, it does something, and there's concrete either side, you know, you've concrete not got a lot bumps, of leeway. It's a normal road, so yeah. it's not like you're racing on a smooth racing circuit. So, yeah. you know, for us, there's a there's an element of confidence, you know, if you don't have confidence, yeah. then you, you can quite easily be in the wall, you know, yes. very quickly. Yeah. And, and I suppose that's the challenge for us. We get one qualifying lap, we don't get to warm up or anything no. like that, straight out and bang. So, so yeah, it's a, you know, it's really challenging for us and, and very exciting. And then, so do you, are you sort of aware of how that technology that's being developed for those cars, you know, could, in a way that Formula One, a lot of Formula One technology eventually leaked its way into, you know, mass produced cars? Are you, are you aware of how those, those technologies are? Well, obviously, the inside, the software side and all that side that happens within our team, I'm quite heavily involved with and I understand that. And, I'm, right. and I understand that that has been you know, transferred into the road car side, especially from Nissan's point of view, right. which is extremely important for them. However, like the championship regulations and the specs and all that sort of stuff, we don't have much say on that. Right. But I think in season nine, they come along and say, this is what you need to make your car to. And I've heard that in season nine, there's going to be a huge step already for us in terms of technology and, right. and how it's all going to be sort of worked and, and managed around the car. I suppose the thing that is most likely in Formula E, as opposed to, you know, combustion engine vehicles generally, the, the, the most likely thing is they're going to go farther on a charge, they'll go faster, they'll just get more scary. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're talking about, you know, having, you know, half more power again which is wow. a quite a big step right. and then obviously I think with the technology the batteries will get better and and also with the cars you know at the moment the batteries where a, a normal engine would be within a normal car but yeah. at some point I think they may be able to put them in the floors and, right. and you know spread it around the car more so then the performance of the, the car goes up because yeah. the centre of weight is lower and, the that, of and that is a big a key point then so if you're doing you know 180 miles an hour in a Formula 1 car along a straight bit and there's a corner you can, they could corner faster than a Formula E simply because of that, the enormous downforces yeah. working on those cars. Because so, you're not getting up to those sort of, like in the Paris circuit, I don't know, how, how fast can you get 
I think you know we can that. sometimes go up to like 240, 250. I mean, max right. speed, if you went on a really long straight, you would probably do 280. So they're already right. quite fast. But yeah. when you add downforce, you add drag. So yes. it yes. makes it more difficult for the motor. So I think right. the first step is the technology of the power units, the batteries and all that sort of stuff. Then we can start to add downforce and see see how the, the cars perform. But again, downforce can be a negative in terms of racing. We have extremely right. exciting racing because we can follow, we can overtake, we can touch. The cars are extremely strong. Yes. So, yeah. um, no, so I, did, you know, I witnessed that in Paris this year, and yeah. I went, that is definitely, that one hit that one, but they're both still going. Yeah. I had a lot of crashes. Did, well, there was, I was leading and I hit the wall. But there was a moment when I was standing next to the track, in, uh, I can't remember, there were a little double corner, and the, and the sound of the cars going past was like, there was a, 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 an angry kid in a playroom who was throwing empty plastic boxes across <laughs> the floor, because it was just sort of bits of bodywork. It's then, probably me. And once you'd all gone past, there was all these men came out to pick up bits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a phenomenally expensive bodywork that yeah. was scattered all over the road. Yeah. But then, so then, it is, I mean, it is fascinating. I think it's such a sign that Shell are involved in your team, you know, that you think that's, because, they, you know, go back five years, there would be Shell all over a racing, a combustion engine racing stuff, but not an electric one. And you think, how the hell has that happened? They, you know, yeah, that... I mean, when I first joined Nissan, I joined extremely late on, and I arrived to the track, and the car was there, and I saw a Shell logo on the front of the car, and I was like... <laughs> you come to the wrong that's, one. Yeah, that's, that, that's a little bit bizarre. Yeah. Um, but you know, the more you learn about what they're doing and how they're trying to help us develop, develop our, our car and package as well, right. because you know, with lubricants and things like that, we yes, need the same need sort those. of thing. Yeah. And also with the, you know, in the future, maybe to having fast charging and, and how we can work with Shell is, you know, fantastic. And, yeah. and the more you learn about what they're doing, the more impressive it is and, yeah. and how they're pushing that side of it is, uh, no, is extremely No, they're, they're really at the forefront of sort of alternative fuels or alternative energy. I mean, exactly. I think it's fair to say. Um, London next year, which is, I was so thrilled to hear that because, you know, it, it, when I first got involved with Formula E before it really started, it was all about, oh my God, they're going to be going down Regent Street and around yeah. Piccadilly Circus, which didn't quite happen, it was in Battersea Park, but it's going to be around the O2, I believe, the, the circuit. Somewhere yeah, it's going to be around area. the Excel Arena. So, oh, the Excel Arena. And it's the okay. first time that we'll actually race inside and out. So we'll race into it, around it, back out. And you're actually inside it. a building yeah. for some So I time. think, wow. I, I'm, I'm guessing that the the crowd will be able to watch as we come in wow. and then we go back out and then so it's the first indoor outdoor race right. that there'll be so, which would be impossible with combustion cars because exactly, it would be yeah. everybody would be choked that is amazing that's going to be yeah. indoors that is really cool yeah. wow and that is that's 2020 that's happening. that's 2020 and there's right. a double header so it's two races one on the saturday one on the sunday and it finishes the season so hopefully you know next right. year i can have a a good championship campaign. Yeah, and wouldn't and that be brilliant? Who knows if yeah. I can, I yeah. can wrap it up there? Because I mean, I don't know. I don't know enough about the the the, the stats at the moment. I mean, where are you at this year? I mean, because well, obviously it's my first year, so you know, I was expecting to not be great, but I had three poles already, two podiums, finished second twice. Wow, well so, done. You know, things. Amazing. To be honest, I was leading in Paris and Hong Kong, but I crashed both times. Right. <laughs> so had I won those races, I'd be leading the championship. So already, I'm not out of it. I'm yeah. still there, so you know things wow, have been going is, extremely well. That right. is really good to hear. Yeah. Um, just quickly, this is just for me, an old man who doesn't want to be in a crash in a cup. Does it hurt <laughs> when you hit a it big bump of concrete? It does sometimes, yeah. I mean, because I know you're protected amazingly well in the seats, but yeah. you've got really good harnesses. But in you're... Santiago, I hit a wall like square on the side, right? And it was like 58 g, I think. I mean, it was just packed. strong, wow. yeah. Wow. It was a, it was an initial spike, and yeah. and that hurt a bit, yeah. yeah. It made me think twice again when I tried around the outside. So. <laughs> That is brilliant. Thank you so much for talking to me. You're that was really, welcome. really good. Uh, um, good luck for the next season. I'm going to come to. I'm going to be in the XL Perfect. to see you Perfect. go through through the inside of a building. It's fantastic. Brilliant stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much.